How you doing, everybody? <laughs> hey, Bruce and John and Drew and uh, hey, Stefan. Ha, uh, Abdul. Oh, Dominic. Hi, how you doing? Jeffrey, good evening to you. Glad you could make it. Hey there, Drew. How you doing? Hi, Lee. Hey, by the way, too, uh, Drew and Lee, I, I got the stuff. Thank you. Feichel, is that right? How you doing? Okay, Rob. Rob Cole. Hey, Rob. <laughs> hey, and that's something. How's it going? I sent you the price list, and boy, I tell you, uh, this is this is interesting in about five ways from Sunday. Uh, here's the price list. I'll pop it up here real quick. See if I can. Um, let me see. Okay. Um, this is essentially what it is. Is that you can buy one if you want for thirty eight hundred dollars for thirty eight hundred euros, which is about four thousand dollars roughly. And that's a lot more than um, we had expected, but um, a lot less <laughs> than we pay for. One of those watches. Now, apparently, there was another guy in the U.S. who who bought one a while back for two thousand, two thousand dollars, and uh, he said he heard the price was going up. Well, <laughs> he was right about that. Hey, GMT master. Um, okay, uh, it, uh, and that's something right. Okay, forty-one twenty-four. Uh, now that's a a lot more than um, four thousand. I mean than uh, one thousand. And then uh, the number of options that that come out of this. Uh, first of all, is that there's always Vosher. Now I went to the Vosher site and it has there was not word one about how many you have to buy. And so I think that's worth revisiting. I really do. And, and let me tell you, uh, this for the uh, UWD one, uh, that's, that's an awful lot, I mean, for, for that. And, but on the other hand, uh, here's, the, uh, here's the movement by, um, this is the movement that, Marco Langdon, he designed uh, the uh, the other one. Hi, Sean, how you doing? And so we got a lot of issues. All right, there's it. If you buy more of them, you don't get that much of a break. I mean, if let's say if we got uh, five guys together and uh, we save 100 euro a piece which isn't very much i mean it's something but it's not very much plus the fact that we got people all over the world and you know how are we going to to do that is is another interesting issue <laughs> okay hi clyde how you doing um but anyway now along with that another thing came that to me was even more interesting and, uh, and, you know, it's very uh, engaging. And that is, this is called the 31.2, which is the same as the 31.1, except the 31.2 has thinner seconds. I think the price is the same for all of them. I sent them an email saying we would be interested in 1 to 25. We'll see what they come up with. Hey, John, thank you. Um, what they came up with on the price list, though, was for they have 10 or more is 36 and 50 or more is 35. Now, I don't know if 
you know, the guy sat around with some really good German beer and said, what do you want to charge? I don't know. You know, we got this one guy who paid us $2,000. Maybe we'll just double that. And, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on. Hi, Tom. Um, hi, uh, Joas. I, I was surprised by the lack of discount for the numbers. Yeah, Lee, so was I. I, I had, um, I don't know. You know, I, I'm not, um, I know that their other sales have not been going gangbusters. They, they haven't been doing that well with watches, even though they have some of the finest watches in the world. <laughs> so, so there's, I, I, I have no idea what's up with, um, with them. And I, it's just one of those things. Let me see. I think, hang, let, let me see if I can get this last group in here. Then we can see all of them. Um, okay. Here's the other ones. This is uh, 10 and more is 3,600, 50 and more is 35, and um, 100 and more is uh, 32. Still too much, way too much, I think because I don't want to pay that much, <laughs> you know, and I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to go back to, uh, uh, Bosher and, uh, cause this is nuts. This is really expensive. Hey, Dominic, possibly wholesale versus resale. Well, Dominic, yeah, but you know, when you're talking about wholesale, you're talking a lot about a lot bigger discounts. And uh, that's what I, I guess I was about. Hey, Watch Lounge, uh, UWD. Uh, oh, yeah, that's what I just put up. Hey, Geezer, how are you? Um, oh, hey, Watch Lounge, you've been working nights. Okay, well, are, are you commuting between the front room, <laughs> between the kitchen and, and the study? Are you are you out? Are you a free range chicken? Wherever you are, I would. Oh man, um, we went out yesterday, and uh, fortunately, the town that we were in was has a pretty low count of um, COVID nineteen, and this was a Walmart. <laughs> I went and I went to get the. Um, uh, to get some popcorn. There's this popcorn I like, and I looked all over. They didn't have it at Amazon, and finally I found it at uh, online at Walmart, but then they said they don't ship it, so you have to pick it up. So I had to go pick it up. You have to go through the entire store to the pickup area in the back rather than having it out in the parking lot. And there's, I don't know, online every now and then you see all of these pictures about, you know, these are Walmart shoppers, and sort of like a it's almost a redneck joke, uh, but you know, it's, it's they it people they weren't paying too much attention. They had this big plan worked out at Walmart, which was probably put together by a seven-year-old. And uh, <laughs> anyway, okay. Good morning, Watch Habit. How's it going? Uh, Okay, so anyway, uh, enough about my Walmart experience. <laughs> they got, they have all kinds of stuff in there I, I didn't know about. Okay, why does Walmart place its exercise equipment all the way in the back of the store? That's where also they have their pickup. Oh, we don't want to have, we're, we're going to try to avoid contact. So you have to walk through the entire store, get your stuff, which was already paid for, and God knows how you get out of there. I got in line behind this woman who bought everything in the store that had been left over from Easter, which means there was a ton of stuff, deeply discounted. And, I, you know, it was like sh just half-hour wait. And fortunately, another checker opened up, and I ran over there. With, Whoa, but good news. I got some printing paper, so now I can. That was why I felt I had used this was – my last piece of printing paper. <laughs> so anyway, okay, well, let's talk about this for a second. Some, I think it was important. Hey, Fahrenheit, let's just send some, uh, no, no, <laughs> no Fahrenheit. 
nobody send me money, okay? I'll tell you what would happen with your money. I would keep it all for myself. You'd never see me again, and I'd head for Rio. Have some fun. <laughs> okay. Hey, Pedro, how you doing? Tom? See, I guess Walmart copes relatively well in a recession. In a recession? <laughs> in a pandemic? It, it, it's Walmart is like the cockroaches. It's the only thing that survives after a worldwide pandemic. No, I got nothing against Walmart. I, I have, you know, I have nothing against any store where I can get good deals. You know, they, they have uh, sort of these uh, train wreck uh, uh, salvage store uh, in town. It's called Ocean State Job Lot. And you go in there and <laughs> they have a weird assortment of everything. Fabulous prices, though. So, no, I, I got in, in the... In the um, the, the shoppers there sort of look up to the Walmart shoppers as them rich folks. So I've got I've got no reason to be snobby about. <laughs> hey, Orange Jam. <coughs> okay, what's going on? Let's see. Uh, hey, Flippin' Zippo. Okay, well, I'm glad I, I'm glad you're all here. Um, so, so let's talk about this now. Here's the thing that I was glad about. This is the 31.2. Okay, and they, that's one thing. It's very easy. I'll put. This. Do my uh, there. It flew away. <laughs> okay, here it is. Thirty-one point two is the name of it, and it's center seconds. Now the thirty-one point one is small seconds at six o'clock. But this is what we wanted originally it was a center seconds. And we found one at, well, sure, but we never got around to finding the prices because we were pretty sure you had to buy um, 25. So, okay. Uh, so what should we do about that? I mean, given these prices, I may go ahead and get one anyway. You know, but uh, it was like, uh, just because I like it a lot. And... The best price they have on, I think this is one of their best price watches, is like 22000 or something like that, and then they upped it. So even 4000 doesn't sound terrible. Uh, doesn't sound great, though. It doesn't sound like 1000 But anyway, this is this is what it would be like. We could go back to the washer, and I think it was called the 3002 center seconds, um, three hands, uh, so that's another option we have, and you can go back to them and ask them about it. Yep, if you buy one, that's right, 3,800 uh, euros. And, you know, like I said, this, that's not uh, chicken feed, but on the other hand, it's not 20,000 euro either. Okay, uh, hi, Eddie, how you doing? You're up early. Uh, could you email uh, Enamel Dow for to assemble the watches as well, or how do we do this? Ah, for, uh, okay, good question, Fahrenheit four hundred. Hmm, I don't know. I'm gonna, you know, I haven't, I haven't contacted him again because uh, you know the last time I uh, contacted him, you know, maybe maybe I had to do that. We we can still, you know, back and forth on email, and the last time. Um, I contacted him. He got back to me right away. So I'll, I'll, I'll check that out. Okay. Uh, you're going to contact Sardoy Billard. Uh, I'm not sh I did know who they were. Maybe uh, Kadoki. Okay. You know, here's another possibility that would be really cool. Um, Kadoki, I understand, is doing something with Marco Lang. 
And Marco Lang said he's got something big planned uh, for this summer. Now, whether that's going to come around or not, we don't know uh, because of, you know, I don't think he was planning that. Um, he was planning this, I think, before we knew about the pandemic. So uh, that's another thing, Kadoki, and and he and Kadoki have done stuff together. So maybe, and I like Kadoki's stuff, I really do. Um, uh, you know, I I don't want to get sort of a uh, a lot of people say, well, you know, all he did he took a ETA something or other and put engraving on it, and <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Uh, you, you don't win a. a you don't win the kind of prize that he won, I think, by doing that, to tell you the truth. Okay. Um, um, Drew, uh, 4547, uh, the price list, I think we, I think uh, NS something and I have the same price list, at least from, um, what do I call it from uh, Lang and Hein? Um, direct from UWD. That was what they sent me too. Oh, somebody sent me. <laughs> it was, they don't talk to me. Um, you know, I, I, this brings back another idea though I had, uh, but this would this wouldn't involve everyone else. It just involved me, so I won't talk about it. Okay. Uh, so those are the prices we have. And one thing I got to say about that price list, lots of options, okay? Unfortunately, like I said, I think I think they sat down, you know, let's everybody have a beer and figure this out. And, okay, how, how does that sound? That sounds good to me. We'll see if it floats. If it doesn't, we can always lower the prices. But you can't raise them. Well, they just did raise them. So I don't know if it's going to happen. Maybe this is a possibility, too, is that five years from now, you know, when they're 10,000 euro a piece, which, oh, I could have got it for 4,000. I don't know what's going to happen. None of us do. Okay. Uh, <laughs> why did I leave? Never our consciousness, Clyde. Only in, only in your witticisms. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, Bruce, you spotted my Bove. I'll show you my Bove. This is the upside down version of the Fourier, uh, what's it called? The Beauvais 1930 Fourier. Actually, it's called Beauvais 1822 because that's what they like to call the new one. Okay, if they could do burgundy or blue with a, a minutes track would be great. It would end up being a 7K watch, so you have to think about it. Yeah, but go ahead and do that. Uh, uh, and there's something to find out about it, you know. You know, here, you know, a watch, even if it costs 7k, you're talking about something that would, you know, you get a new one somewhere, it would cost um, a lot more than that. Okay, now somebody uh asked me about getting into the symbol. Okay, so we get these parts, so we got the we, we have the movement, we got the case, we've got the uh dial, we got the hands. That's all you need, okay? Those are the only parts you need. And so we put them together ourselves. Oh, and of course, the strap, add the strap. Now, if someone say, wait a minute, you know, I don't want to spend $4,000 on a, on a movement and, um, you know, another God knows what on a case and some more on a dial and then find out I can't put it together, should we have some put it together? I don't know. I feel perfectly comfortable for doing it, but I don't have a brain in my head. So you know, I'm a watch collector. So, you know, I don't know about you guys. Corona beer sounds good about now. That's that's sort of watchmaker food. All right. So what do you guys see? Uh, most manufacturers have different price lists for, uh, and some have OEM pricing. Usually, lowest price they sell at other manufacturers. Yeah, at seven K, I might just want a uh, Kadoki though. You know, and that's something you're absolutely right. Also, too, I think we could get a, um, I got a feeling that I, I, I have to get back to Rolf again. He, he was saying he could put five together for me for 
thousand a piece, five thousand dollars a piece, not euros. And I was thinking, whoa, now <laughs> that wouldn't be bad either. So I have to clarify that because at one time I told them, I said, you know, if you put together somehow put together a five thousand dollar watch, you could sell those, you know, day and night. And so maybe that what he was talking about. I'm not sure. You know, it, it, see, the thing is, is that if we do some research, we can come up with all kinds of interesting options. Um, okay. Uh, okay, and as something um, made a stupid op, uh, offer on a... <laughs> How do you make a stupid offer? The only stupid offer, I think, on a watch is for an amount you cannot afford. That would be stupid. I mean, you know, suddenly you have to get into the kid's college fund or some other place that could be very dangerous. You know, <laughs> that's the only stupid offer. If it's a really low ball offer, uh, and sometimes it, it, for a watch, you're not, mm, yeah, it'd be sort of cool. You know, I'll throw some money out there and see if they say and hope to hell they don't accept it <laughs> because then you're, then you're in hot water hold snap. Okay, um, maybe we could uh, have a selection of options for movements, case, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, like Weird Al, you should dare to be stupid. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's, oh, man, it's talking to somebody. Oh, I got uh, some troll was... He was all upset because I didn't pronounce uh, H. Moser et company correctly. Uh, the word C-I-E is in French is company. And instead of saying H. Moser et company, I said H. Moser et C. So for those of you who speak French, I apologize. If it's okay to say C instead of company, let me know. Uh it's got to hurt. <laughs> uh, did you ever contact Moser? Yeah, I did, uh, Rob. Uh, now, I may not have contacted him in the smartest way. <laughs> I contacted him directly uh, to um, Edouard uh, Milan, which is probably not, the, you know, on uh, through uh, uh, through Facebook. And I, you know, I, I thought that was a good way because the... Um, H. Moser's site is, you know, one that is, is you know, all about H. Moser, a uh, Facebook site. So I thought, well, I'll try it there and see what happened. You know, uh, so far nothing's happened. So I could try the other way. I got a feeling, though, that that may not come into fruition. Something that has come into fruition, though, is something we predicted ourselves right here on Watch Art Side. And that is, is that something big is going to change because of the quarantine, the pandemic, and everything else that's happening. Now, I think it was yesterday I mentioned that, or it was probably several days, that Edouard Milan had a really good article about how how things are going to change after all of this this whole thing is over, uh, the cancel or the near cancellation of uh, Watches and Wonder and um, Basil World and so on and so forth, okay? So I got this, um, I've got this email today from Watches and Wonders. And guess what? On April 25th, which is just five days from now, they're having a great big online Watches and Wonders show. So this ought to be really interesting for us, um, I think. I think it'd be sort of cool. Hang on a second. Let me, let me see if I can. Um, you guys probably already got the email uh, yourselves somewhere. Um, okay, let's see. Where is it? Yeah, uh, if you get the Watches and Wonders newsletter, uh, it says Rendezvous. I'll read it to you because if I try to put it up here, it's not going to work. Um Hang on a second. I got, uh, let me give you the URL for the online version. Yikes. I hope this doesn't goof everything up. 
Okie doke. Okay. Um, hope this works. Okay, there's the link to it from Watches and Wonders. Um, John, could be a great occasion for a movement. Maybe so, you know. Uh, where can we find the Mela article? I think it was on, it was either on High Horology Lounge, uh, but I know for sure it's on the um, H. Moser Facebook page, okay? So you can find it there. Um, watches by SJX. They're the ones that have a lot of, oh, that's right, in you know, something. That was where the original article was. Uh, the link to it was on the uh, Facebook pages. Okay, Josh, this is when Rolex market for hot items is selling at retail prices, you know the world is is messed up. Okay, uh, the blue blue hands with a slate gray background is just stunning. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of really interesting stuff out there. Um, so... Uh, so that'll be something I think that we can look forward to. What is it on Friday? Let me check my perpet. No, it's on Saturday. So it'll be this next, this coming Saturday. And um, let me see if I still have that. To there. Uh, let me let me check the. Um, okay, it says as the world continues to respond to the challenges of the COVID nineteen health crisis. Watches and Wonders is fast-tracking the digital rollout of its uh, global concept. We are thrilled, they're always thrilled or passionate, to announce the creation of our new online platform, which is only 30 years out of date, where the entire Watts community can enjoy exclusive coverage of the new releases and trends in 2020 from our prestigious maisons, product launches, expert analysis, interviews, uh, with industry insight, uh, insiders, brand immersions. I didn't see Clyde's name on here. They're talking about experts. And if it doesn't have Clyde, they're, they're posers. We know that. Okay, let's see what else is going on. Let's connect from April 25th, 2020 at 12 uh, p.m. CET. I'll have to figure out what CET is. Is that Central European time or something like that? And find out the latest. News from Watches and Wonders. Talking watches 365 days a year. This is what they should have been doing all along. This is what we've been talking about. You know. Whew. Okay, so that's that. Uh, hey, pseudoscientists, how you doing? All failures, no matter the reason, will be blamed on the CCP virus. You are absolutely right. Uh, every bungle imaginable. But the thing of it is, is that you know, uh, hey, Richard Davis, the, um, oh, okay, the, Jorn may have his stuff here. This is something they should have done about the same time that Jeff Bezos started Amazon. This should have been done in the early 2000s. Had they done it, I think they would be better off. We would have more options. And But what they've done is that they've let it slide over to the secondary markets. Um, what H. Moser has done, H. Moser et Company has done, and if anybody from H. Moser is listening, I never said this, okay? If you go to H. Moser, you'll see this online store they have, okay, which is something that they could have had a long time ago. They didn't have it because the brick and mortar retailers were saying, don't do that. Okay. So here, here's what they have. They have another section that's called pre-owned. And all of the ones that are pre-owned are probably not pre-owned. They're probably brand new ones of the same ones that are selling for deep discounts in your secondary market. But they can't say that. Uh, they can't say, well, this is uh, we're giving deep discounts on our on our watches. 
But they can say, well, here's some really good deals on pre-owned watches. Now, that's my assessment. I could be wrong. And if I am, I got all of that from Clyde. See, Clyde tells me everything. So it's his fault. <laughs> okay, what's going on? Let's see. Or oh, even better, I'll just blame the COVID-19. Uh, is there a Moser AD in Canada, Toronto? Canada's got everything. Um, I don't know if they have a boutique or not, but I bet they have an AD. Uh, CET, Central European Time. Thanks, Mark. That was what I thought it was. I wasn't sure, though. Okay, uh, watch habit. The pioneers uh, shipped to me with duties and taxes paid was less than the Kadoki, but the pioneer prices jumped a few months later. Yeah, they're, they're uh, uh, you know, something. Uh, they have so many good watches. Overall, though, their prices, their of the newer watches coming coming out with the HMC two hundred, uh, which is a newer one of their newer movements. That they have they dropped the price on that. Uh, my understanding is that the big problem they were having is this: is that the movements that they were making were just too expensive to make. Okay, they're great movements, but it was almost impossible to charge what they were charging, uh, which was not inconsiderable, and and still make a go of it. And so this is what I think that they had to do on a lot of these. And so if the uh, the ones we got and the ones that are still available, I think they're worth a gold mine because they're deeply discounted. And they're not going to make them anymore because they're too expensive to make. And so we have a watch for a deep discount with a movement that's too expensive to make. First I heard of that was uh, with the uh, double hairspring. Extremely difficult engineering job. So they quit making them. Uh, the ones that do make them charge a lot of money for them. So anyway, I, to me, we're in sort of an interesting spot right now. A uh, collector perspective, this is a great time to buy watches uh, if you still have reserves, though. Yeah, you know, I tell you, you know, a lot of times, probably if somebody's got, you know, uh, money stashed away for a rainy day that they sort of call watch money, it, it's a rainy day right now, I think, for for all of us. So we got to be careful, you know, except for NS something who did something stupid. <laughs> He made an offer. That's that's something I I want to hear. I want to hear about his adventure. He ends up with like one of the world's rarest and most expensive watches for next to nothing. <laughs> that it wasn't stupid. If he gets a watch that he doesn't like, then it's stupid. <laughs> uh Since the end of 2019, the three-handed pioneers have been uh, retailing a lot of value, uh, retaining a lot of value. You know, and that's something, this is what I've said, is that, the, you know, you're not going to lose money on them because they've already been discounted and they're worth a lot more than what they were discounted for. <laughs> so you can, I don't know, for people who care about that um, kind of thing, well, gee whiz, what if, what if I want to trade it in? Well, um, then, you know, you can take your hit. But if it's already been discounted and you got it new, discounted, you're not going to, you know, it's not going to be discounted much anymore. In fact, you may even make a little money if you if you have a really good deal. Yeah, uh, Lee, I, you may be right. We just don't know. Uh, if my offer gets accepted, it will not be anything amazing, just something cheap and fun. <laughs> Okay, you know something. Oh, I was hoping you had, you know, it's the, you finally saw your Grail watch. It's oh man, I'll lowball it and see if I can get it. You know, see, I, I hear the guys on a ventilator. I'll, I'll send money now. It really, <laughs> but it cheap and fun. Those are the best ones to buy, I think. Um, all day yesterday, I was wearing my um, regulator. And I, I, I don't wear it too often. It just sits here on my desk, and it's fun because I get to look at it and see this weird timekeeping. Uh, but I wore it for a whole day, and still weird to look at. 
Okay, the prices over the next few weeks may change as the business situation gets tougher. They, they may. I don't know. You know, I, I there's announced prices and there's negotiated prices. Uh, you, you have two things. You have people without money because they're, they're, you know, their jobs have been put on hold. And you have people who are hanging on to what money they have because their jobs have been put on hold. They don't know what's uh, happening next. Can't blame either one of them. It's not, see, since it's not a good time to buy a watch, that if you happen to have some money put aside for whatever and you can do that, this may be a good time. I don't know. Hey, Blake, what do you think about a minute repeaters? Blake, you know, I tell you something. They're, they're probably, I mean, uh, when, when minute repeaters, when you're talking about a watch for a horological whiz bang, they're, they're really something. But my problem is I have this stupid hearing loss and I can't hear them anyway. I could have a million dollar minute repeater and it would just you know, sound like every other watch. It doesn't make any noise. I've never been bothered by a watch uh, loud ticking. I got an alarm watch. I got this cheap uh, Russian alarm watch because I wanted to have an alarm watch. And instead of, well, since I can't hear them anyway, I might as well get one that vibrates <laughs> as well as, but the only sound it makes is the vibration uh, from it. And then there's sort of this dim little thing that sounds like a hummingbird, you know, <laughs> at, a social, at a socially safe distance. So that's my thing on that. Okay. Uh, GM, I'd like to be able to get uh, do Merte at the end of the year. Who wouldn't? That's a great choice. I love those watches. Of course, I want to get the uh, true second. And uh, there, maybe there's something on that. I haven't seen that much of a price improvement since uh, prior to COVID-19 crisis. Uh, I haven't seen it either, Mark. Uh, I, I wonder, though, if if it exists in the negotiations, um, if you say, hey, you know, you go out there and you offer something lower than you normally would, whether it be accepted now or not, I don't know. Uh, right now, uh, I've been noticing the number of H. Mosers from the, uh, what is it, the endeavors, the early endeavors that were called Mayu and um, Mohad or something like that, really dumb names. Uh, and then they, they became small seconds, center seconds. Those have some great prices. Somebody got a, a perpetual uh, calendar on one, got a great price on it. So those are beginning to shrink. There's still some left, but I, I've noticed that they're going down. Who knows what's going to happen? I, I don't. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I may, that may be true. We'll have to find out how NS something did on his negotiations with his <laughs> watch that he got. Because everyone is in denial. Everyone was in denial about the economy before COVID-19. No kidding. Well, Alton is in the house. Welcome, Alton. Uh, it'll depend on my watch fund uh, getting seized by the new kitchen authority. Who knows? Hmm. <laughs> oh, the new kitchen authority. You got to watch out for those. <laughs> that's, that's the, yeah. All right, guys. Well, listen. Um, got to run and uh, everyone stay safe and uh, you know, think about some of these things. And I, I think I'll, uh, I'll try contacting um, Vashur and sort of, sort of poking around, see what we can do. Uh, you know, I might as well contact um, uh, Marco Lang too. see what's up with that. And I'll contact Rolf again and uh, say, you know, it's probably right now not not something that would be in the realm of possibility because we wanted a 40 millimeter. Is there a possibility to purchase older classic movements for a watch like IWC 89 or others? Oh, sure. Yeah, you could do that. 
I don't think you could get it, uh, Drew. I don't. I don't know if you could get it though uh, from directly from the uh, from IWC. Maybe you can. I have no idea. Not a bad idea. That's one thing. See, that's. Uh, I don't want to go off on my rant about IWC, so I won't. Take care. Be safe. Asamanyan, or actually, maybe this afternoon if you're going to be around.